Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to a fresh new episode of Missing Curfew. I'm Shane O'Brien coming from Action Park Studio with my boy, the one and only Updog. What up, Obes? Captain Conley in the booth. Salary cap cons. <laughs> cons is fired Free up about the cap, frenzy. and we are going to get into it. And our boy on the East Coast, Jimmy Scoop Broadway Hayes. What's up, fellas? Hazy rocking the Pats tarp. I like that. The Pats shirt. Oh, yeah. Pats uh, got a little COVID going through the team, but they'll be ready to go this week. Yeah, it cost me my fantasy. I mean, I had two guys out on COVID. The fantasy is a joke, by the way, with this whole COVID thing. I don't know if Cons, if, if, you're, if your fantasy team's getting hit by this COVID bug, but all of a sudden the game's postponed. I lose two guys. Like, what am I supposed to do? Well, I work the waiver wire. You do? I work huh? the waiver wire. That's you how you do. win. That's, that's how you win championships. Our fantasy is a joke because Larry Flowers didn't pay his damn bets last year. Yeah, we had to fold our fantasy oh, boys. Can you believe yeah, that? He, he was thought, commissioner, too. You want didn't to tell, pay. tell a story. Larry Flowers, okay, commissioner of our fucking, uh, what would we call our league? It was We had a juice league, 10 guys. Yeah, 1000 bucks a guy. It was legit. There was yeah, like 10 guys. Like, you got to oh, pay. That's a nice if pot. You, yeah. If you pay Damn. the whole fucking play the whole season, you got to pay. So what this is, is that? That's this bullshit. is the story, Cons. I'm, I'm in Switzerland and going through... You know, a little a little tour of duty over there. And we get down to crunch time, last couple games. And Flowers is on the edge of making the playoffs. Sneaks into the playoffs by one point. Limps in. Limps in. Next day, so playoffs start. Next day, he's got um, like Harv or something. And I'm playing against Ryan O'Reilly. Yeah. And all the of a sudden, Ryan, that. the fact daddy, Ryan O'Reilly doesn't dress Drew Brees and puts in... He put in a guy Another that good quarterback, though, Cons and Broadway. It was another good quarterback. It wasn't that yeah. caliber one. So he so he didn't like the matchup. He didn't like the matchup. He thinks O'Reilly throws the game. He thinks is yeah. That, he is thinks Larry the fact the that he throws the game, so we end up crippling Flowers. Is what is what this whole thing goes down as. Flowers is like, there's no way he's not playing Drew Brees in this fucking fantasy. There's no way he's leading the league in points. And I'm like, I'm buddy. I'm not. I'm playing him right now. I'm gonna kick his ass. That's that's my motto. And I, plus, I'm in Switzerland. It's fucking twelve hours ahead over here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just dipping into some wine, watching my fucking watching my boys just. Phew. So I take him on, Hazy. I end up making it to the finals. Flowers loses, goes into the semis. He thinks because his points in the semis and his consolation round were higher than mine in the finals that he would have won. So he like has this thing. He's taking it to the grave that we cheated. Yeah, that's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. fucking sounds, ridiculous. Let's get into the I, shot. So I, like, I don't want to give him another second of airtime. Let's get into the I go, you're saying Ryan O'Reilly fucking threw the game. I'm like, you don't have the Stanley balls to Cup tell him. champion. He never played O'Reilly. He never Con Smythe winner. Ryan O'Reilly's going to throw a fantasy football game. I exactly. die. <laughs> Moving on. Like, Suck good it, point. Flowers. Flowers, you're a joke. Pay your tabs. Um, <laughs> and listen, something happened on the Missing Curfew Instagram. Um, we're not sure, Uppy, how it got up there. We're not sure. We, you know, we keep a tight leash on our Instagram, but uh, Kevin Conley <laughs> is a handicap. Leaked. It leaked, Cons. It that leaked on our social oh, media. It's shady. I've had some cheap shots taken at me. That, <laughs> is that fake? That news? hurt. That hurt. And then you guys are wondering why I don't <laughs> repost it. You fucking swiped. You went into the app. You swiped my score, which you know I'm struggling with. You know I'm trying to get in. I'm trying to get into the teens. I don't need you posting a 20.5 handicap or whatever it was. I mean, if you look at the scores, there's some high quality players. You got 91. You got Sergey Fedorov on there. You got 90. You got the fact daddy. I think you had Gretzky in there. 99. Like, but I mean, but, those are quality. Like, That's honest. You know what? It's an, I'm keeping an honest card. Um, what is it? What did you guys say? I'm not doing so. What? Yeah. So Broadway, we told him before. I said, Cons, listen, you're a good Irish Catholic kid. I get the honesty, right? I, I see you yep. post a, a 101 out there. I know you're not chintzing it, right? Like, I could have pulled a 98. Could have pulled a 98. I go, but you can't, up dog. You can't. I go, Cons, you can't put up more than a triple bogey. And he said, Bro, is that for real? I said, Yeah, your handicap's going to come down. Because you can't do more than triple Broadway. Because I started digging in, and I wanted to see what Collins' handicap was at, and I see a one on one, and he's, and then I see a ninety one, and he's posted like a twenty one handicap. That is some sandbagging bullshit, right there. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to be the reverse sandbagger, though. That's the thing. Oh, no, you can't be. Oh, my little brother. Every score that I have posted on that app, for better or worse, is the real score. Because aside from the handicap part of it, I want to track whether or not I'm getting better at golf. It's really more about increasing the quality of my game, not like bullshitting about what the app says. Listen, I'm not gambling. I want to know. I, I want to get respect better. that. Speaking of gambling, I'll tell you right now, Connolly, I will take you 
Once the boys heal up, I will take you on my squad as a 20. We ride in the same cart. Because I can shoot a 15 Fuck, as well. I take you all day. Well, you got a 20 all day. And it's going to come down for sure. So, Cons, we're going to get to the bottom of who leaked that for you, bro. We're a team here at Mr. Curfew. We'll get to the bottom of it. Let's get into some hockey, boys. I could We could shoot the shit all day, obviously. But just wanted your impact on this. The, the Rangers officially signed uh, Lafreniere. Now, you two guys were wingers. You know, we get the, you know, McDavid makes an impact right away. Crosby makes an impact right away. Those guys are centermen. Can this kid, he's supposed to be just as good as McDavid or close, can he jump in as a winger and be an impact player right away, Ups? Man, I think so, Obi. I, I did TSN Free Agent Frenzy Friday, and I was, uh, I was given the opportunity to put out my, my 2022 men's Canadian Olympic team. Yeah. And, I mean, fuck, talk about sick players and young ones. Barzal, cons. And just fucking studs that are, like, on the bubble to make this team when you look at the names, but... Lafreniere, I mean, fucking McDavid, his first year in the league, had 100 points. If Lafreniere is anything like him, and a lot of guys are saying that he could be the next McDavid, could be the next McKinnon, you got to look at a guy that's, he's going to be playing with Panarin, he's playing in, you know, and hopefully under the big lights, in Madison Square Garden at some point in the next yeah, couple of years. Yeah, good point, Uppie, good point. This kid, fuck, he got his contract out of the way today, he's... uh He's going to be a stud right off the bat. He's going to get his chances, his looks. He's going to put pucks in the net. He's going to be a big-time player. Yeah, Uppy, I agree with you. I think he makes an impact right away, especially playing wing. I know those guys you just named are centermen, but, I mean, they're world-class players. I think coming into the league, not being a centerman is less responsibility, less pressure on him to control the entire zone and get him back. I think with his skill level and this kid, like he's got back-to-back -back CHL players of the year. Before that, he was rookie uh, CHL rookie of the year. This kid's numbers are comparing to Crosby, McDavid, and Junior. So I think he comes in and makes a huge impact right off the get-go. He's on that same trophy I am, I guess, on huh? that CHL rookie of the year. <laughs> wow. Wow, Not a big um, deal, kid. Um, yeah, I mean, you actually answered my question, Broadway, because I was you know, watching, I don't know, whatever it was, the NHL Network, and they were saying, like, it never dawned on me, I didn't know this, but I guess coming in as a defenseman or a center, your weaknesses are more easily exposed and as yeah. a winger, you're just kind of there waiting to drill one home and score goals, yeah. right? Yeah, and he's going to be playing with high-end players like that. I think that's going to be his role on that team. He's going to have to – he's expected to put up big numbers. Like that kid, uh, Capo Kaka, he, he didn't have a big year like he was supposed to. And I think this Lafreniere is going to put up big numbers right away. So he'll have Sabanajad up the pipe. Yeah. Fucking solid player. I mean, and you speaking of the bread man, I saw a thing on Twitter him. I don't know if he's back in Mother Russia, but he's doing a shooting drill. Top two. Oh he my. was putting it short side titty short cons. Side titty. Oh, um, he didn't miss. I think the thing about being a centerman compared to a winger, too, like a centerman, what Con said, you got to play like hard on both sides of the puck always, or you're going to get fucking lit up. But you get way more touches as a centerman. So you get to build your speed. Obi, you know what it's like with a centerman coming down at you fucking full blast. Obi, I was just about to ask you that question. As a winger, like, you guys would know more. I mean, you guys were wingers, but some, some nights I watch some guys play wing on my team. Well, they didn't get the puck out enough, to be honest with you. Some nights I'll let them know about that, but some nights they didn't really get involved. Like, they were working hard, but they're up and down the wall. The, like, some shifts be up, back, up, back, you're off. So is, that's kind of my question, Obi, for this kid as a winger. Like, some nights... I guess if you're playing with Panarin and the other kid you just named, you're going to get touches. He's yeah. going to get his looks. Yeah. It's important that you, when you do get touches as a winger, because you're usually standing still, that they need to be like solid plays to either Jimmy, to your other winger who's built speed, or to your centerman coming underneath, or to the D-man coming up like the fucking... That was, I was just going to say, the best play in hockey Broadway for me was up to the D, strong side D, up to the winger, winger back to the weak side D, baby. That's NHL Broadway. Oh, yeah. Hey, weak side breakout right there. We That's all feel NHL, good. Right? We feel good. I feel good. We change. Go back to the bench. Look at the crowd. Be like National League. National League. Little crispy passes right there. Obi's last year playing <laughs> hockey in summer hockey. We're at Anaheim Ice. The ice is so shit. Oh, he fuck. comes beelining around the net, fucking with the puck, and he hits me. I'm coming down. Just a quick stop on the hash marks. He yep. throws a fucking puck. It laser beams into my skates. <laughs> I fucking kick it up. One touch to my stick with like a little drop pass to him between my legs. And as he picks it up to hit me back with like the hardest pass he's ever fucking through in his life, he's going, fucking National League touch, up dog, fucking National League touch. <laughs> hey, up dog, great thing about up dog, always get his touches, give it back, give it back. It's all about touches, oh, yeah. Broadway. Like, listen, if you don't get it enough, why give it up kind of thing. So real exactly. quick to, to wrap up the Rangers, um, I can't wait to get Collie's opinion. Are they 100% a playoff team up dog? The New York Rangers, uh, I mean, they should be, right? Are they, um, yes or no? They got great goaltending. 
Yeah. They got the best fucking young player out of the draft. They got the uh, MVP candidate and the fucking the bread man. No, I don't think they're going to make the no. playoffs. I don't think so. If everybody stays healthy and everybody does what they're supposed to do at fucking $10 million a year, they should get in to the six or seven, maybe the eight seed. Would you love to see the Islanders Rangers first round with a Islanders home ice advantage or what? I would. Yeah, you would. Broadway, the Rangers making the playoffs 100% or what? I say not a chance. I say they might sneak in as an eight seed. Like, I look at their team, their top six, they're heavy. Like, that's an unbelievable top six lineup. But then um, their bottom six, um, they really haven't proven themselves. And the decor to me is just blah. That's what so I'm, I'm going to give a no shout chance. out to a kid that we used to skate with, uh, Brandon Lemieux. We call him Meat because he's an absolute fucking Meat. But he's going to be a good player, this, a big part of this team moving forward. So keep an eye on Lemieux. Meat, if you're listening. You're kind of old school. The boys kind of like it. Yeah, so yeah. Keep her going. He, he just puts his face right in the fight, doesn't he? Oh, yeah. He just fucking goes face first. He is full meat sauce. The Rangers need to sign this Tony D'Angelo. If they can re-sign this Tony D'Angelo, I think that helps their chances of making the playoffs because I think he's one of the best restricted free agents on the market, and they got to figure out a way to keep him. Also, too, um, and Lupul touched on it a little bit, and you guys have talked about it, you need those depth guys, right? It's all about depth cons. Right. Like, especially come playoff time, like, you know, the Rangers could use a Corey Perry or a Ryan Getzlaff should they buy him out. Wow. You know, just like those those depth guys that always seem to be in the middle of good things on these playoff runs with these teams. Rarely is it the young guys. It's usually the Corey Perrys, and those are the guys that stand out, to me anyway. I agree. Cons, is that some scoop that Ryan Getzlaff's getting bought out? There's no way they can buy this guy out. I, I think Getzy, what do I know? Getzy will be here next week. We can ask What him. do I know? That's what I heard. That's what, He'll be sitting in this studio in that chair next week. Maybe we put him on the hot seat. I have a feeling he can handle it. He can handle he's it. He's not going to choke. No, he's he's he, not going to give up he anything. Can, he can handle up. the bright lights of Action Park. <laughs> oh, he sure can. <laughs> okay, moving on, and we're going to start with the captain in the booth here. The New York Islanders, listen, they, they were quiet come UFA time cons. Then you see the trade for Taves for the two second-round picks. What do you think is going on there? They signed Schneider, but you know, obviously Barzell. What's going on in Long Island? Does Sweet Lou got something up his sleeve? Well, first off, I'm, I, you know, the Islanders are obviously, are, you know, for the most part, maybe not as much now. They're an under-the-radar team. But that Devin Taves kid, he's the real deal. And uh, again, who knows what these draft picks turn out to be, but I think you're going to see him shine in Colorado. And I think he's a a top four pair. I I, I don't know. He's, he's just really good. And I think take a little pressure off him with some of those guys they got up front. And and I think Taves is is a good pick. Do you not agree Uppy? You're got a funny look on your face. No, Uppy's doing some research over here. Broadway, what do you got on the Islanders? Cons, to be honest, I was completely shocked they traded that kid Taves. He was in uh, Bridgeport at the beginning of the season when I was in Wilkes-Barre, and he was a guy that we played against him a couple times early on. I was like, there's no chance this guy will be here for more than a month. He got called right up. He is unbelievable. He can shoot a puck. He can run a power play. That was a crazy trade, I thought. I thought that was that Taves' brother. No, no, no relation. So, no. I say no for, forever when he came out on the ice, I'm like, fuck, that motherfucker has a brother? Yeah. Like, I, I, He's got a brother, I, but that's not him. I got you. So I was going to say, what a hockey family. Well, also, too, this, uh, this kid that you didn't really see much of, his name is Noah Dobson on the Islanders, and yeah, they Toronto, are right? just convinced. Is it that D- this he's guy's a D-man? The, he's a D-man, convinced that he's the real deal. And also, too, you know, Broadway, I, again, the age thing is, is whatever. I, I know it's, a, it's different in every case, but, you know, Devin Taves is only two years younger than Nick Letty, you know? Nick yep. Letty's pretty good, you know. I mean, I, I I don't know. No, Nick Nick Letty can still skate the same as the oh, day he came he in the can league. Skate with the best of them. You know who loves Letty? Barry Trotz. Fucking Trotzy. Yep. Let's That's play. why he didn't. He go. ain't going anywhere, boys. Nope. Got a hammer on him. <laughs> Does he? <laughs> oh yeah. That's Does he? The Does lead the size of this microphone I'm talking into? <laughs> Some guys just it's have it all. Be. Some guys have it all, don't they? Hazy? By the way, Naro just went ew. Yeah. <laughs> She's been sitting in here for ten episodes. This is the first time she ever was grossed out. <laughs> okay, let's get into the one thing. It's, this is regarding the Islanders still too. Broadway is the salary cap, and Collins has been fucking charged up. I, I just I don't get, understand. I get it. I get it. Like, you know, you see Toronto get TJ Brody. Vegas makes a play. Broadway, dive into the salary cap a little bit for our listeners and for cons and even for me, myself. What exactly, I mean, Give us the 101, Broadway, walk us through salary cap 101. 
Well, the set, the cap is uh, they just set it at eighty one and a half million. So that's the max you can spend. And Toronto's actually under the cap right now, which is shocking. I was the same way. I'm like, how the hell is Toronto signing these guys? And then you got teams that need to get to the minimum, which is sixty point two. And you'll see teams like Bob. Uh, I remember back in the day when Arizona took on Datsuk's trade from uh, Detroit. Boy. They just took his trade to have the salary at yeah, Bowling just to take those uh, guys' salaries to get to the, the floor. But right now, because of all this COVID and stuff, that this cap is going to stay put and it's going to hurt the teams that love to spend the dough. And it's going to hurt the middle class players in the NHL right now. They're going to get fizzled out because these teams need to pay the high end players. And then you need young kids making, or not necessarily young kids, or guys making league minimum to make sure your team's under the cap. I got to love that floor, I tell you. Yeah, that floor. Not just for dancing on, but that floor got me about 14 bananas the one year because yeah, the Florida Panthers had to reach it. Fucking Dale Talon went Dale Talon went on a fucking free agent spending free and fuck, did a few of us reap the benefits of it. was a good it. sign, though. He signed you, Thority, UC Jokinen, he signed uh, Derek Kopecky. McKenzie. He Wasn't signed, that the year? Yeah, Derek McKenzie. He signed uh, yeah. Christopher Stieg. Um, he brought he brought a bunch of his Chicago the- Blackhawks on. No, we made you, the fucking playoffs that year. The playoffs by eight points. Uh, uh, <laughs> we made the playoffs that year. We lost to fucking Marty Brodeur and the goddamn Devils, who went went on to the fucking Cup final. Oh, that was year. that the year? That was the oh, year. Okay. Yeah, I mean, 2012. I, 2012. That's right. No, 2004. Yeah, 2012. No, 2012. My first the Kings year. Kings won that year. They did. Fuck uh, with with the wagon. flat cap being in place right now, like a team like Seattle might be able to take advantage of this because they know teams are gonna be. Now, the hands are going to be cuffed because there's, there's no way for the cap to move right now because it, you, the cap was related to hockey-related revenue. And right now, the teams are, you know, they're not with no fans. The revenue's not there. So there's going to be a lot of teams. Right now, I think there's six teams over the cap with, like, Arizona, St. Louis, Vegas, Anaheim, Montreal, Washington. Those teams are all over the cap. They have to the first day of the season to get under the cap. So that means there's going to be some more trades coming or guys getting bought out. Yeah, I agree, Broadway. And the salary cap is, you know what? Fuck the salary cap because it's ended my career. I mean, a few other things it's ended my career too, but it's salary like green beans. <laughs> salary cap. You don't did, need the fucking green salary beans. cap didn't help. I mean, there's a few other things, off ice things that might end it too, but the salary cap didn't help. That played into it. Played into off it. ice things played into it. Yeah, that's great stuff on the on the cap Broadway. Jimmy Scoops, he's all he's an insider and he does he can do whatever he wants. Cap all just what do you need? Broadway's got her boys. Our boy at Missing Curfew, William Scotty Upshaw. Goes for TSN for UFA and calls Tory Krug to the St. Louis Blues when all these guys, Bob McKenzie, drags all these legends, didn't get it. Up dog, congratulations, a big day for Mr. Curfew, but good call. And what do you think about Krug, you know, signing in St. Louis? Yeah, it was a big day for the boys, wasn't it? I think it was 9 a.m. So they, this TSN thing started OB early. You were working serious sports radio. You know, basically, I'm up at 6 15 a.m. I got the underwear on. I got my shirt and tie with my jacket over it. Set up the camera down in the good. kitchen. Hair was looking pim- pimping. Yeah, it was looking good. And uh, so my first fucking hit, they're like, what do you want to talk about? I'm like, well, I don't know who just signed. Fucking Markstrom maybe just signed. Six right for, in Calgary. Six so six, to chat about Marky. And then they're like, we'll jump into Petrangelo. You play with him and talk about him. So basically, lose my train of thought, Jimmy. Halfway <laughs> through this fucking, uh, you know, it's just me talking into the fucking <laughs> Not computer. you. Kind of like what you're doing right now, but you can swear and do whatever the fuck well, you want. This was feeling. coast to coast. That's a bad feeling. Cons, it was there. like... I've been there. I love Petro. Played with him for fucking three years. You know what? He was our captain. Great captain. Plays his balls off. Uh, good on both ends of the ice. D- deserved to be the first fucking free agent, the top free agent pick this year. But basically, I'm, I'm running through like why I like Petro, and then I'm like, well, fuck, I, I, I wouldn't take him. And then I'm like... Fuck it. You know what? If they don't take him, Doug Armstrong, he's going to make a move. You watch. He's going to sign Tory Krug. And so I say this live, and then and then the fucking couple of the boys like laugh after live, <laughs> and they're like, oh, that's our new insider, fucking Scotty Upshaw there from California, right? So I'm Cheap like, shot. fuck, I just totally like threw out like a call, right? And so blah, blah, blah. So me and Obi are crushing drinks at the golf club. Old after, fashions, Con. After, after, after a long oh, day of favorite. work, Obes, right? Tip the cap. We worked hard that day. Yeah, long day hard. Work. We worked hard, Ops. And we're in the fucking men's room having a couple fucking old fashions. It was, we were going out for my birthday that night. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, we're sitting, cheersing. And sure enough, Pierre Lebrun texts fucking Tory Krug to St. Louis, seven years, fucking a million bananas. Two million or whatever it was. 
and 45. fucking forty five. Hey, we lit up for missing curfew. It was a big. We day. were fired up. We started throwing on the missing curfew Instagram, and we were we were having a time. That's pretty cool, though. Upset you called that. And I had people write me from St. Louis, like, "Where did you hear this?" By the way, and I'm like, decent numbers spike. I go decent numbers spike. Decent numbers spike. Yeah, hey. it's all about the numbers spike. I'm like, knock knock, who's there? Fuck off. <laughs> I ain't telling you who my fucking contacts yeah, we're are. Not right, giving up our sources here at missing curfew for everybody out there. All right, we we. I'm not going to say who gave me that piece of Getzlaff info. Yeah, see, yeah. Broadway, what do you think? Are, are, are the Blues better with Krug, Broadway? I, I personally, I think they are. They got a lot of rights to hand a D-man, Falk, Paranko. Now you get Krug, guys got bite. Are they better? Was it a good, was it a good deal for St. Louis, Broadway? Well, Uppy, I first want to welcome to the insider team. It's a good team. <laughs> Time stuff. That, that was very impressive. But back to your question, Obes. Yes. They are so much better. Tory Crew I agree. could run the Boston Bruins power play, and that power play's probably been top three in the league for the last five years. This guy can do it all. He can skate. He's tough. I love the way he plays. He can play both sides of the puck. And the, the thing I want to ask you guys about, how nuts was it that Boston didn't even give him a fucking contract offer? That's crazy, man. They're going to miss him. He had an offer a year ago, was the rumor. So he's sitting there. Well, he probably wanted to stay in Boston. The Boston fans were pissed, being like he took one year or less. And, and uh, no, he didn't. He had 45 bananas here and zero bananas here. So what's the monkey do? He's going to take the fucking bananas. You got to take the 45 bananas. That's a lot of available. fucking bananas. Jimmy, you should know this because you were probably playing with him at the time. But when he signed his extension back, you know, a couple of years ago as a, you know, he's an RFA, restricted free agent. Uh, I don't know if he had arbitration rights at the time, but he took a massive pay cut to stay like not to stay, but like he was helping that team big time, you know, just over 5 million at the time. He had 40 points, 45 points guys played yeah. 10 years. He's got, you know, 300 and almost 350 points. Um, similar numbers to what Petro's done. You know, Petro's yeah, won a cup, but this guy's been there a couple times as a fucking top end defenseman on a, on a great hockey club. He knows the right way to play. St. Louis blues are the fucking, you know, a team ready to, you know, ready to make another run at a cup. I agree. I think it's a great. I think a great. Uh, fit. I think it's a great fit. A great addition for. Them. And I know, like a guy like you're gonna love it, Fact Daddy. We bring him up all the time, cons, but he's gonna he, love. He's your, you need a Fact Daddy tattoo. I love it. You love the. <laughs> we guy. need a Fact Daddy T-shirt. Oh, we're getting them. I already we're got one them. Irish tattoo. I get another one. If By you the want, way, <laughs> I, I don't know if you remember, and this got to be him, right? Do you remember when we, we we were in we went out that one night in Colorado and we went and had a couple drinks at the hotel and that was Fact Daddy. That right? was Fact Daddy. That was a young Ryan O'Reilly. That was a young Fact Daddy, like a rookie Fact Daddy. It was a second year in the league, Fact Daddy. I was just <laughs> He was him, still a man him. back uh, then, though. Guy had too. a bigger beard when I met him than I can grow to this day. And but. you know what I remember, too? You predicted that he was going to sign the big ticket. Did, we, did they know how good he was going to be? I just said, that listen, Cons. Maybe not Con I material. said, Cons, listen, O'Reilly, I know you're a good Irishman. Keep an eye on this kid. He's going to be a player. Yeah, you said that. Okay, boys, listen, we got to go quick here. We got a sick guest coming on. So, real quick, Petro to fucking Vegas got his ticket. Is Vegas Stanley Cup favorites in the West? They won the free agency, yeah, but. I, they haven't exploded their team here still. I think they're over the cap. Yeah. And, you know, yes, they got the best defenseman in the in free agency day, but a little commotion in the ocean over there, there in, is. in Vegas, isn't there? Can I ask one question? Um, sure. What is so good about a right-handed defense shot that everybody loves so much? Can't find them. But what, but what is the benefit to being a right-handed shot? Broadway, you want to take this one? or? Yeah, the thing is, there's just not as many cons. Most players are left-handed defensemen, so when you find a right-handed shot defenseman, who can skate and move pucks and run your power play? They're a dime a dozen, and if you can get them, you gotta go get them. So that that really matters. That drives up his price. The fact that he's a right oh, that drives shot, up. If you're a right bananas. shot defenseman, you're getting paid. It's like wow. being a centerman over a winger. You're gonna make more money being a right shot defenseman. I'm making my little kid a right shot defenseman. <laughs> Conley, uh, Team Canada has this thing. Like whenever you play with Team Canada, they always organize their defensive pairing. Uh, whether it's World Juniors, World Championships, Olympic team, they always go with lefty righty D. It's like their makeup. And if you look, you know some of the best defenseman uh, pairings in history are, are lefty righty. The Niedermeyer Prongers. Yeah. Uh, uh, actually, sorry, that's a that's a false. That's a lefty, lefty. But you're right. I will it say. Is. I will <laughs> say. I will you say. Have I'll have another glass wrong. of wine. You could have been more wrong about that. I, no, but up. it is. Have another glass. Cons. I will say this. <laughs> As you know, I was a I was a defenseman. Yes, you and are. my uncle played in the NHL, and when I was getting to the you know, OHL and to, to to pro hockey American league, he said, "Learn how to play your offside." 
As a left defenseman, if you can learn how to play the right side, it's a feather in your cap because there's not oh, yeah. a lot of right defensemen and there's not a lot of guys that can go over as a lefty and play the right side. So it's something as a D-man, like Sheldon Brookbank, great right-handed defenseman. So it's it's something, Kev, if you're a right-handed D-man, it's, it's, a, it's a big plus. It's kind of like... Aaron Hicks hitting from both sides of the yeah, dish. It fucking writes it as the old switch hitter, bud. <laughs> <laughs> okay, listen, one quick shout out. Richardson, one year deal for one bananas in Smashville, Nashville. We're gonna go visit them. Good Col- for him. Yes, COVID sure. or not, we're going up. And here we're gonna have him. a good little trip to the Lake Tahoe here tomorrow. Yeah, him. Richie, we're gonna celebrate. So congratulations, 100%. Richie. You'll be in here soon. Boys, we're gonna move into the listener part of the the listener questions part of the show here. Um I love this. I hope you guys love this as much as I do. Yeah, this, there was a couple good ones in there. Yeah, this is uh, from CJB1976. Fellas, Updog mentions Bonnaroo all the time. How many concerts slash shows would you see during the hockey season, Uppy? And besides Nashville, what's the best place to watch a concert in the NHL? New Fuck, York. I've seen a lot of good shows, but New York oh. is great. And cons, I mean, LA is not so bad either. You got the little troubadour over there. Fucking, you get the Roxy, uh, Palladium. I mean, there's so many sick venues here in LA that are that are just iconic. Um, yeah, you could walk into a little dive venue in LA, and all of a sudden you're looking at somebody. We're like, holy fuck, why is this totally. person playing here? You know what I mean? Well, I think one of the best concerts I ever went to was playing for the Florida Panthers, and I got to go see Jay Z, and then Ricky Rose comes buzzing out down in Miami. That that is big time for me right there. That's, so, a, good, <laughs> that's a good concert. If there's a hip hop yeah. concert around me. I'm going. I don't care if it's the night before a game. Night after a game, I'm getting my ass to that concert. <laughs> That's tough to follow, Hazy. Fact. Um, for me, it was <laughs> was Denver. Denver's got some great venues. Obviously, Red Rocks. There's a couple sick little venues downtown. I'm gonna fuck them up here right now. But uh, in Denver, I would go see shows anytime I can. So Joe DeMarco came up and saw our boy Jimmy James in Denver at this little quaint little venue. So Denver, uh, great place to see a show. Red Rocks up as you know. We jumped around there last year watching My Morning Jacket. I was in Philly back in the day and had tickets to see uh, the Fleet Foxes, who just Love came them. out just came out with another album this yeah. week or last week, and had like four tickets. Sick little venue for their first album. Fuck, no one would come with me from the Flyers, even Loops. I'm like, buddy, oh, fuck, what else what? are we going to do today? Loops had a bro so I have a, up, eh? I have a little puff of the doobie fucking head right in. <laughs> Pure solo mission with a bunch of hipsters at this fucking, at this concert. Stayed after, met the band, fucking hung out, had a glass of wine, went home. <laughs> Probably went one and one the next day. <laughs> 100% you did. But back to that Jay Z concert, Uppy. I was with Big Dad Dylan Olson, and we were absolutely pinned at this concert. I somehow weaseled my way down because I knew all the security guards in the rink. I was standing outside Jay Z's locker room in front of A Rod, Kevin Hart. I was next in line to get into Jay Z's locker room, just buzz and hang out with them. But then him and Beyonce wanted to leave. I think they wanted to get to live or something. Figures A Rod was there. Oh, he was behind me in line. This security guard made me feel like I was. He's no Jeter, is he, Con? A Rod, the dick rider. Jeter don't wait outside. So, Hazy, I I hate to one up you on this, but he's going to. Because you just started talking about Jay Z. And I'm going to throw out a shout out to our our boy, David Waldman. Remember David Waldman? I remember Waldman. He hooked me up with so much, (laughs) so much music and fucking concerts. And and so, shout out to him. But anyway, uh, you remember the little room in between our dressing room uh, in Florida and where we would go meet the guys for the other team after the game, that little tiny room? Yeah. So, Jay Z had that whole room fucking tented off, full bar. That's where I was standing. So, you were okay. So, I was at the show and Waldman's there and he's like, I know Jay Z's manager. Fucking come on in. So we go in there and I'm I'm like I'm at a place. It's full on <laughs> fucking is I mean, I love puffing dubs, but this whole thing was kind of a hot box and it was it was super chill and laid back. But I'm like, are we really just staying here to to meet Jay Z? Like I, I know that's super cool, but I feel like a fucking idiot. And well, because like, he doesn't really this. want to meet you at all, right? Totally. <laughs> so you got <laughs> Where's Listen, Beyonce? Why don't you, you want to be see Beyonce? the photo and I'm going to fucking put it up because it's hilarious. But I come in, I'm like, Jay Z, what's up, man? I play hockey here with the Panthers. This is our room you're in. Fucking, it's never looked this cool. Thanks for coming. Like, the show was <laughs> sick. Um, I re- really wanted to meet Kanye, but it's all good. No, and Beyonce. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, I shake his hand and I get a pick and it's a little foggy, but his face is just like, Who's this fucking dude here? <laughs> but anyway, it was. Uh, Did you spark a doobie up with him? No, I, I don't know. I was hanging out. Uh, well, the last listener question Jackie Lou 19. This is a good for this time of year, boys. I love the pod. Question for the boys Does the boys in the locker room ever lose faith in the GM when a key member of the team or a glue guy gets traded up? Chicago Blackhawks. 
Yeah, great point. Or Broadway, you take this one. Like, it affects the room. It affects the room 100%, especially when you get a team. Like, if you're on the bubble making the playoffs and you make a move and take a guy out that's the heart and soul of the team, guys are going to be bullshit. And then on the other end, if you're sitting there and you're sitting there in the playoffs and your team's high in the, uh, in the stand-ins and your t- GM doesn't make a move, you kind of get bullshit because you need, sometimes you need that extra piece to get you over the edge. They were always a good team at moving a piece and keeping the core together to stay good and to not fucking rebuild. But this is this is obviously stinging. But didn't up, didn't something yeah. happen to you in St. Louis with the guy we're about to bring on that that, that they shipped out? In the, You're damn right. Yeah. So, tell so my last year in St. Louis, we we had a great season going, obviously, and we started to slide. And this is what happens, boys, when you start to slide at the wrong time during the year. Yeah, the fucking the GM Shit starts sideways. You know, army doesn't, army doesn't fuck around. He, he turns into red face army where he like you come on the bus after a game and his fucking face is completely red and he wants to he wants to tear someone apart. Well, GMs get fired. They do. Players Their don't. livelihood. And he hadn't won at this time. He won in <laughs> Dallas, but his tenure there was fucking, you know, it was. We get bought out cons. <laughs> so GMs boys, and coaches get fired. Kevin Shattenkirk, who was one of our. Our leaders are one of the best guys in the room, uh, one of our better fucking players day in, day out. He obviously didn't have a contract the next year, and he was a movable piece. And Armstrong got so pissed off that we let like a six or seven game slide go before the deadline, and we were still in the fucking playoffs. And he shipped Shaddy to wash. He shipped him for a second round pick, I think, and uh, Sanford, who ended up turning out to be a big part of their cup run. But and he's at the boy. time, you're like, Fuck you. But yeah. everybody still won. This. Everybody won because Shattenkirk won a cup and the Blues won and everybody wins. Yeah, it's true. So doesn't always shake out like it's, that. It's I'm a sure great it's a question. Bummer. I've been in some dressing rooms, just wrap it up, where we where they trade. Always the good guys get traded. So it does sting. To the listeners, thanks for the questions. Boys, we could do this forever, but we got to bring Shaddy in. So as always a pleasure. And next, uh, we got Shattenkirk coming in. Oh, this will be fun. Welcome back to Missing Curfew. We got an unbelievable guest coming in here. Up dog, I'm going to let you introduce him. He's your boy from back in the day in St. Louis. And uh, who we got? It's with my absolute pleasure here that uh, Missing Curfew fans and, and the crew here at Action Park Media uh, to have Stanley Cup winning absolute legend, beauty from out east. I don't know exactly where you're from, Shaddy. <laughs> Connecticut. Connecticut. New Rochelle, New York. New Rochelle, New York. Wait a second. New is he York. American? Are you? <laughs> You didn't know Shaddy was American? New Rochelle, the home of Kevin Dillon. That is oh, wow. No shit. Kevin Dillon. There you go. We haven't wow. met yet. I got to meet this guy. Didn't know you were American. I'll finish it off. Handsome fella, Kevin Shattenkirk. Kevin, welcome to Missing Curfew, fella. How are you? Thanks, boys. Uh, I'm doing well. It's a pleasure to be here. I've been, uh, been following you guys, and, and you guys are taking off with this thing. So thanks for having me. Hey, Shai, thanks for coming, buddy. Congratulations on everything. And the backdrop, I mean, is sick with the Blues jersey, with the A and the captain jersey from BU. That's a pretty nice touch there, bud. Yeah, we got uh, we got a, another jersey to, to put up down here, obviously, <laughs> after with what happened uh, this year in Tampa. But, um, yeah, these are uh, winter classic with, uh, with the Blues. And then, obviously, with, with Boston, uh, we played at Fenway against BC, which is a blast. Beat us in that game, C-Cap. Yeah, we did. Took you down, Dave buddy. with a Fenway Park home run celebration. Hey, Kevin, can you help Broadway with his background? <laughs> hey, mine's on the front of a white wall. I got the little guy. My little guy's orange sailing over. It's under construction. I got to make. All you got to do is all you got to do is put a fucking jersey on a hanger, Jimmy. You know? <laughs> oh, I got I got the with jerseys the framed. I just don't put them on the wall. You think I'm domesticated to put them on the wall? My what? wife's screaming at me. Drop it's an ugly color. Guy. Throw something. A little Jay-Z splash of color. Or something. Come on, Jimmy. Fucking. Wolf. Hey, it's coming, boys, it's jersey. coming. It's coming. <laughs> hey, Shaddy, real quick, I'm, I'm going to start us off, and thanks for joining us, fella, and, and congratulations on the cup, like we said. And we touched on trainers a couple weeks ago, like when you guys were just starting the Stanley Cup final or end of conference finals, like how important they are. And Razor and Molly, the guys I had in, in Tampa, been there a long time. Just, I'm just curious as an ex guy, how important were those boys in that bubble for you, day in and day out, moving your gear and all the stuff that they do for you guys? Man, I mean, the amount of shit that they had to do in the bubble was insane. I mean, for Mully, um, being in charge of obviously all the COVID protocols and knowing what it took to get us back, even just to Tampa, getting us tested every day, um, making sure everyone was, was on uh, the right track with that. And then, you know, for Razor and and those guys, um, you know, like you said, we were switching from, 
you know, the Rogers place arena, whatever they call it now over to uh, the practice rank daily, um, switching locker rooms, even from morning skate to, to the nightly games. And, um, I mean, they were just unbelievable. They just, they did everything as you guys know, with, uh, you know, with a smile on their face and, and they don't, they don't get you, uh, you know, pissed off or get you thinking about anything away from the game other than what they're doing, uh, in the locker room. What kind of tests were they doing? Were they doing COVID tests or the Stitter tests? <laughs> <laughs> I guess they do it all. Clean, clean, as, some, a, clean uh, as a whistle. Some of those like, trainers do it all the way. Like they do. some of the times when you come in after a long road trip, you're like, oh, God. Oh, but how about you're at training camp? Like, wait, a what test? They're like a training camp. Uh, like, STD test. Oh, Jesus. Sti- you know. I train a kid like, do you want the HIV test every year? And you're like, fuck, I had a pretty good summer with us. <laughs> oh, yeah, sure, why not? I'll take it. Fuck. Oh, you had to check that. Yeah, but the poor of you, like, ah, do I? Yeah, oh, fuck, you, I better. So I mean, you had to do it. And, and Shaddy, I'm just going to touch up on this too about the, you know, after you guys won the cup, listen, I played in Tampa. I thought what you guys did was amazing with the jet skis and, and you guys were buzzing around and. We're just curious, you know, where was Kucherov and the Russian squad? Because we didn't see him on any social media. Were they that pinned or were they just, were they just saying keeping it off social media and it was keeping it private kind of thing? No, you know what? They, I think they were that pinned. I mean, Kuch isn't a social media guy. Neither is Vasi. Um, Sergachev kind of leads the charge in that group with uh, really putting everything on there from, you know, the eggs he's eating in the morning to him brushing his teeth at night. So um, I was surprised that, uh, that he took a look, that he, kind of took a day off, but I mean, the boat party was unbelievable. Um, you know, Cooch was, I, I'd say the, the MVP of that whole week showing up completely blacked out. You know, he's a pre-reserved <laughs> guy. Um, he was pouring beers down our, our owner's throat at, uh, at the, you know, real reception we had at Raymond James. I mean, he was on fire. So, uh, I think he was trying to give Ovi a run for his money. He sure did give Ovi a run for his money. And the other one, a question I had for you was the big rig. Did he pee oh. his pants or did he did he spill beer all over himself? Because he looked no, like was, Billy Madison when he's hosting the top board. I know, I know. That was a bad look for the big rig, but I think he was. Uh, it happens. It was the probably the, the hundred beers that he shotgunned on the boat that day. I mean, I was I was doing the hollow man's. People were chucking beers from uh, from the banks of the of the uh, canal there at us, and um, you know it, that that whole day made it seem real that we finally got to uh, celebrate with some fans. Yeah, Shaddy, it was unbelievable. And I'm going to wrap up my last question. We'll get more into a discussion with, with your two boys here. But listen, as you know, our captain in the booth, Kevin Connolly, is a huge Islanders fan. So here's your chance. Let us know how <laughs> easy was it to wash the Islanders away. And, and you know, this is your chance to make like, that oh, six. What are the Islanders missing, Shaddy, from your, from a guy who knocked him out in the conference finals? Listen, we were, uh, you know, we were able, honestly, to, to shut down a lot of their top guys. I mean, um, you know, we knew how hot they were coming into that series, taking down Philly, who seemed like, uh, you know, the favorite out of the East. But, um, I mean, for as for as much as it seemed like we dominated them, we'd still be in 1-1 games going into overtimes. And, you know, I know in my game five, I, I whiffed on that puck and turned it all over, gave him a chance to uh, kind of get some breathing room. This year. <laughs> Hans is but, laughing back there. Well, I didn't um, want to say it, but it was hope, a bad Shady. break. It was a you bad bounce. You gave and him it, some you hope. Know, it, it was all it was all worth seeing uh kind of seeing the fans crumble after game five when we took it down and uh you know i know how passionate these new york fans are i've been on the bad side of maybe a couple of uh you know their remarks but it was nice to get that victory and also listen cause has I mean, Vas- been motherfucking Vas- you all the time by Vas- the way oh, yeah. it, vasilevsky's a beast and listen the, brock nelson was a shorthanded breakaway away from sending that to game seven I mean, you guys had a stonewall goaltender. <laughs> Shaddy, Khan's is still not over it. He's saying it was still hey, fluke. I'm just saying it, it was a good. Hey, that's why he's getting paid nine and a half million next year. Con. Exactly. <laughs> well said, Shaddy. I mean, that's he didn't why you to... don't block those shots. That's <laughs> let the goalie block the shots, Obi. Yeah, you're have... in a position you got to block a shot. I don't block it. <laughs> Did he have to do much on that save though? Fuck that guy. I mean, he could have put it top shelf. He threw it right in his chest. Let me tell you something. If as if you're the Islanders and you were going to give one guy a breakaway with the game on the line, it's Brock Nelson. Hey, and Shady, Shady, we'll give you some his, we'll give you some history. That was Cons's draft pick when he went up for the Islanders. He drafted Brock Nelson. Yeah, but so that's not why. I, couldn't, I, mean, still, I couldn't tell. He tweeted he's gonna break away. <laughs> Speaking of that whiff, Shady, <laughs> that uh, that whiff caused a little uproar on uh, someone's someone's gambling site. Did it not? I think I, I got yeah. this. I got this DM from a kid who. Uh, who lost almost his life savings on this, on this. Well, he's bet. an idiot. Can, can you tell me about it? <laughs> Your friend's an idiot. Yeah, man. So I was, I remember obviously I was feeling like shit after that. And 
you know, you, you kind of give a team breathing room and you think to yourself, like, you know, I don't know, I'm getting pulled out of the lineup, whatever it is. So I go back to the hotel, I kind of get in my room. And of course I, I open up Venmo. I don't know what it was. I had a notification from Venmo, some random kid requested 40 bucks from me. So I'm like, <laughs> what the fuck? so he's like, the note was just like, I had Tampa Bay money line. And then I look at my DM, <laughs> same kid sent me a DM and he's like, Listen, man, I was a fan of yours before you came to New York and then you came here, shit the bed. Um, <laughs> then tonight I'm, I, I'm put 40 bucks on Tampa on the money line, which is like my whole bank account. And you go and whiff on a fucking slap shot. Like, are you kidding me? He's like, you better pay me back. So I, I paid him after we won the series. <laughs> Oh, you you paid totally him? paid. Oh I, I yeah, paid. and now the kid's was, the biggest fan ever. He's, right, he's I was going to say he's jersey. got a Shattenkirk jersey in every room yeah, 100%. of his house. It's a legendary. I told him he better he better double down on us. That's Chatty, I, I think the best thing about this, the, the 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 actually the clip of you sending it back to him, the forty bucks is the three oh nine a.m. <laughs> Probably a, you know a, a little glass of wine, fucking trying to forget about the match and just going, this is hilarious, buddy. I I, I hope you doubled down tonight, my friend. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Hundred percent. I had, to, I had to hit him back right away. Yeah, when I was playing in Boston, and obviously it didn't go as planned, when I got bought out, <laughs> some kid sent me a Venmo request for 150 bucks because he bought my jersey. So I told him to go fuck himself, but the Venmo requests always come from these crazy fucking fans. Hey, and it's, you know what? It's probably some kid from Dorchester, you know. 100%. Watching probably, my dad, probably my dad tells My dad probably sent it for him. <laughs> Love it. Shaddy, what's the last what's the last week been like, buddy? You just got back to your beautiful house in, in the Hamptons uh, with your yeah. you know, your beautiful wife who's, who's Oh, Long Island. You're in the Hamptons, yeah. huh? Long Island. Long Island, interesting. Uh, I'm a Sag Harbor guy, uh, cons. I've wow. been, been coming out here for pretty much my whole life. So um, but no, it's been great coming home. Um, you know, we had to do the the quarantine thing and, and it's been somewhat quiet, but you know, we're, we're waiting for opportunity to hopefully get a chance to, uh, you know, bring the cup up here, have a nice, uh, shaker at the house. I mean, up you've seen Just what, a, what a party at this house can look like. So oh, I've seen the photos. Uh, yeah. oh, is it so it's, uh, sick. it's been good though. It's been nice to get home and, and, uh, just chill for a little bit. Shaddy, I, I actually got a little Sag Harbor story myself. So last year, I'm, I'm flying in from L.A. to go to uh, Montauk for the fucking weekend, right? Eh, fuck, oh, yeah, for I'm the come, weekend. I'm flying out to no, Montauk. listen, I'm, I'm, I'm flying in. I'm going to Newark. Ah, there's weather, right? Of course. Uh, next thing I know, I'm going to fucking Connecticut, right? I landed in Connecticut. I text our boy, Matt Harvey. I said, Harvey, I'm in Connecticut. What do I do? So I go to, uh, what is it? Something Haven. New Haven. New yeah, Haven. New Haven. New Haven. Next right. thing you know, Shaddy, long story short, I take four fucking ferries to get across <laughs> to get over to fucking Montauk. I'm like, by the way, that's probably the quickest route. That's what I was told. I asked everyone, I asked the locals, what do I do? They say the you jump New on Haven this ferry ferries, to this ferry. The New Haven ferry is the move. Okay, so next time I'm, I'm stuck, I'm texting Shaddy. Maybe he'll send me a fucking blade chopper. I was going to say, he'll send, you, he'll send you the bird. Seriously. It's, just, it's, it's a couple of G's, bud. A couple of G's for a blade chopper you're wearing. Yeah, right? Right? Yeah, yeah, man. Get off your wall, chopper. Brian. <laughs> Chad, I got a question for you with the with the cup. They're going to give you a day with the cup with all this COVID stuff. We're working on it. We're you know right now the uh, kind of they're telling us that they're not going to be able to do it. If we wanted to do something, we'd have to go down to Tampa and celebrate. Um, but I know our teams. You know Tampa's been kind of pressed in the league and trying to work something out. So the, the NHL has been good about it. They're trying to make it work. I think the big thing is that crossing state lines and going over borders is hard for the, uh, you know, the keepers of the cup to go through quarantine and all that stuff. So we're hoping to do something. They said at very least we'll, we'll, we'll get our day with the cup down the line. Because I'll be able to talk to Marty Walsh and I'll be able to get you a duck boat out there and you can take that duck boat right across the Hudson and bring that <laughs> cup right to Penn station and get a nice photo of yourself. Just hoisting that thing right in front of, I'm getting the picture in front of Penn station. I'll tell you what, I think, uh, I think Mack truck, McDonough might be flying in for that picture. He might be stopping at seven <laughs> half for, for a quick pick. A little photo op. Oh, I love it. <laughs> Shaddy, I fucking told... I love the way that McDonough played for you guys. I thought that his presence was unbelievable. Bogosian was unreal. Our boy Luke Shen, unbelievable. Your back end was fucking unbelievable. So I do have a little text here from one of your boys that said you ended up being the Tim Hortons run mate for your boy Hedman throughout the playoffs. Is this... Uh, was that what the guy fucking needed just to, you know, win the con Smythe and get just vibing? You get that guy whatever he needs. <laughs> that's the that's the secret behind becoming a con Smythe trophy winner. Um, is having some little bitch boy go get your coffee. <laughs> 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 you, but, uh, guy, Shaddy. you don't need that guy you know, wasting I mean, energy. 
look, when I'm, I was just making 20 foot passes to him on the blue line and getting, getting assists left and right. So, uh, no, I mean, we, he's a good buddy of mine. I, I, I grew super close with him on the team this year. Um, someone who I obviously got to play with a bunch and ultimate team guy and just an absolute horse. I mean, in my mind, he's going to go down as maybe one of the best defensemen to ever play. He'll be up for the Norris for the next four or five years. And, you know, he's just uh, a phenomenal human being as well. He's like the godfather. He's like a like a big Nick Lidstrom. <laughs> he's a fucking beast. He's shattered. Right. Like, I saw him get the Conn Smythe with his beard and how, to, like, he just a, he's just a, a beast, man. Viking. He's a, he's a Viking, man. He's a Viking. He's a Viking. Viking. Like, he fucking. comes from, like, northern Sweden, the small town of, like, I don't know, seems like 200 people. And, you know, out of the 200, they have like 10 of them are in the NHL. So it's, it's insane. I mean, he's, he's just uh, an absolute beauty. Well, you know, the Islanders could have had him. Uh, <laughs> they drafted Tavares hey, hey. over him. They drafted Slow Boots <laughs> over true. Like their headman. It's true. Hey, Shadi, here at Mr. Curfew, a lot of things come back to the Islanders. Just give you a heads up there. <laughs> Seriously. No kidding. Hey, you know what? Cons, it's, uh, I hope you get your day with the cup or, or, you know, you guys bring it back to Long Island. That way, uh, you know, you don't have to keep referencing all these missed trades and, and draft picks. <laughs> you know, Lou shut me down, bro. Lou came in and he ran me out of town in about five minutes. I'm done. He took Cons' all-access pass. He can't, Cons can't sneak in the back door anymore. <laughs> he can't go up to, you know, poor Cons, man. Fuck Lou. We're not fans. Chat, throughout the playoffs, your top dogs, including yourself, were just phenomenal the whole entire time. What does that do when you guys have, like, Point and Kucherov just going off the entire time? And then you got a guy like Stamkos come back and plays two minutes, scores a goal. What type of energy does that bring to the bench? Let our listeners know, like, that type of energy and how it gives your team the confidence to keep moving forward. You know, I think everyone always talks about your best players have to play their best in the playoffs. Um, and it's true. I mean, you you hope that, you know, they show up for a series and someone shows up, you know, the next round. But like you said, they were consistent all the way through. And, and I think, uh, you know, I, I talk about it a lot. A lot of those guys were kind of, you know, pissed off and, and hearing about how they lost to Columbus, how they got swept by Columbus the year before. And a lot of them took that personally. I mean, some of us new guys, we didn't have to, to worry about that because we didn't, you know, play on that team. But our core group of guys, our leaders, our, our best players, they led the way for us in the playoffs. And they were on a mission to, to shut everyone up and, and prove that, you know, one, they're, they're worth the price. And, and two, that Tampa Bay is, uh, you know, going to be a team to worry about for a long time. Oh, yeah. That's a team, like you said, you got those motivated players. And you, your team added guys like you and McDonough who are two motivated guys. That just, uh, that gelled completely for your team. That's probably one of the big reasons why you guys won. Yeah, I mean, we, look, we had a lot of guys, uh, you know, like myself, be able to sign there on some friendly Bogosian. deals. Um, Bogosian, we had depth everywhere in our lineup. We got guys like Goodrow and, and Coleman uh, and Gord who were just our absolute worker bees. And, um, you know, we were, I think the other thing people kind of underestimated about us is that we were tough. I mean, there, you know, there were a lot of teams that uh, thought they could run us out of the building. Um, but that wasn't the case once you, you know, you had to answer to Patty Maroon or, or Goody or Schenner or any of these guys who were willing to drop the mitts at any second. Yeah, totally, uh, Shaddy. And you, you brought it up as our Broadway did with the leaders. Just everyone's talked about. Obviously, Stammer comes in and scores that goal. But talk about day to day what Stammer did in there. Listen, you guys were in the bubble for outrageous amount of numbers, but at least you were playing games. You know, I met Stammer when he was 18 years old. He's a great kid, but to not play, how hard was it for him? And, and what did he do just day in, day out? Was he in there talking to you boys and just being Stammer? He was. I mean, you know, he tried to kind of play that line of, of not being too involved. And, and, you know, he kind of knew he wasn't in the locker room during games. So he didn't want to, uh, you know, interfere with anything that was going on there. But at the same time, you know, he was kind of our, our fall guy when, you know, we lost a game or, or he could sense that maybe the mood was down a little bit. He kind of just would rally everyone and, and talk to guys individually. And like you said, I think that was the toughest part for him was not being able to play. It's kind of carrying out this, uh, you know, being the franchise face for so long now and then getting to the finals, going that far and, and not being able to be a part of it. And um, obviously when he came back and scored that goal, it was huge. But everything he did up until that point, trying to work his way back, not quitting on the season at all, um, I think that was kind of the real inspiration for us as, uh, as a group. Shaddy, 
fuck, I bet, you know, we played together for three years. This is going to sound like... Hope he loves you, Shaddy, yeah, This is going to sound like I'm going to stroke you, sure you off does. here. He but loves for, you. For more reasons than I can begin to even tell you on, on like a 60-minute podcast, whether we go 60 or whatever, we could go all day. Uh, you are one of the best teammates I've ever played with, uh, and I say that that everyone in the St. Louis Blues organization and dressing room would probably say the same thing. And throughout your playoff run and into the finals... Uh, to the point where you're holding up that cup, you know, the group messages that went around with the Schwartzies, the Bertuzzos, you know, Edmonton's, yeah. Steen, uh, Otter, like, it, we were so fucking proud of you. Otter. Um, but Thank one you, of the reasons that, you know, I found you so fucking interesting um, and and the type of leader you were was something you did before these games that I, I had never seen in my pro career. And I played hockey for, you know, 15, 20 years. As long as they let you play. As long as they let you play. Until they took my fucking jersey. Until they took much. your fucking jersey off your back. But listen, so, so our listeners out there, Kevin Shattenkirk, you know, we're, we're, we'd love to dive into some Hitchcock stories too because our fans love it. But, but, uh, but Hitch, Uppy, let me ask you a question. Is, is Shattenkirk your Ryan O'Reilly? You're damn right. He might be. He might be the fact daddy to me. I never because got to play with Shad Kirk. Obi loves Ryan O'Reilly, and I'm looking at him right now talking about you, and you might be. They all fucking, you play with fact daddy too. I when he was a kid. So maybe Colorado the fact daddy like, learned a little bit. By the way, the fact daddy's Bruce's. a great nickname. I just missed Shaddy. When I signed in Denver, Shaddy, you had just got traded to St. Louis. I just missed yeah. you and, and Stewie, right? He's happy about yeah. that. And He's I happy. walked in that dressing room and. I mean, there was a lot of shatty talk in that dressing room. I'm like, fuck, why'd they trade this guy? Every guy in the fucking room's like, shatty this, shatty that. I'm like, hey, Factor, uh, I'm no GM here, but why the fuck they trade shatty? The whole team loves him. Like, oh, if you remember, that we, we had the Fab Five there for my rookie year. Yeah, Galley? So, you? Ga was it no, it was, it was me, Factor, Yipper, Stewie, and uh, Philip Dupuy. No, wow. you guys and have to expand on that. Nobody knows what that is. Well, he means. did say Philip. He could say Felipe <laughs> if you want. Who were the who were the Fab Five? Ryan O'Reilly, so, Kevin Shattenkirk. O'Reilly. Felipe. Chris Stewart. Uh, me and Phil Dupuy. I like it. And we I mean, we were coming out of the steam room most mornings before <laughs> practice at about seven thirty. Uh, sweat it out. Think, sweat it out. I don't you know, I, I don't want to say there was any you know, correlation there between me getting traded and really none of us ended up in the organization for a long time. But um, I remember when Obi got there, he was like, shit, I would have really loved this group of guys. Huh? Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> Someone had to carry the torch. All I'm, so hearing, I'm, I'm hearing all these stories about these guys. I'm like, I'm looking, looking around the dressing room now. I'm like, we got no character. You guys trade this character guys. Like, that's, I'm like, someone should go up and say something, isn't it? It's too late, I guess. <laughs> so we briefly, before you came on, Shaddy, we told stories about a fan asked uh, favorite place for concerts. And I'll dive into the story I was telling you, I was going to tell the listeners after. But um, I'm with the Florida Panthers. I'm in St. Louis. And I have six backstage passes to uh, Joey Scaleri, our boy, Live Nation. Hooks me up with these backstage passes the night before a game for the Lumineers. Love and the Lumineers. I can't get fucking anybody to go with me. Again, so I'm telling a story about Colorado. <laughs> well, now it's in St. Louis. So I'm like, fuck it, I'm going. So I'm downstairs, I'm downstairs before the show. I'm watching these fucking boys harmon like they're doing their harmonizing. They're all getting ready for their show. I'm just f hanging out in their room, whatever. They're playing two touch. They're playing fucking two touch <laughs> with the boys. And I go out to my seat when the show starts and I'm sitting in like the family section, the VIP, where you want to sit. Yeah, and sure yeah. enough, I sit beside fucking Kevin Shattenkirk. And yeah. I'm like, he's wow. like, up dog. I'm like, yeah, what's up? First time we ever met. <laughs> And he's like, who are you here with? I'm like, buddy, I'm actually solo mission in St. Louis. <laughs> fucking, it's a tough town. Can't get anyone to go out with me here. It's not LA. But uh, so anyway, that was the first night I ever met you. And we yeah. fucking hung out at the show. It was a great show. But one thing you did before every game, Kevin Hitchcock at the 14 minute mark would come in with, you know, to our listeners, you know, you have 20 minutes usually in between periods. But before the start of game at the 14 minute mark, Hitch would fucking walk in. And he'd give he'd either he'd, he'd, either, he'd yeah. either give Kirk Waller Waller or assistant coach or he'd bring it in and he would give the starting lineup sheet to Kevin Shattenkirk, and Shaddy would have six minutes to the eight minute mark when the coach would come in and give his fucking let's go boys speech and Hitch would come in and fucking hey boys or whatever, <laughs> and then he'd go Shaddy take it from here fucking give us the starting lineup, and Shaddy in the six minutes he would have six guys that he needed to announce and he would fucking chirp each one of them. <laughs> to the point, like he would either go cutthroat, and a lot of these guys played every fucking game, so there was a lot Same of times starters, he's chirping. Yeah. yeah, it was right. So, could you that book, Shaddy? If you kept those chirps, that book would be worth something fucking special. But did you continue that on in your career? I wish, uh, 
you know, I, I kept most of those because I had some great chirps and I mean, we would kind of roll with them at, you know, as the season went along, whatever the, uh, you know, the new business was in the locker room, we'd, we'd make sure we touched on it. But, um, like you said, I mean, you know who your boys are on the team. <laughs> totally. You can really go at them hard before a game. And, you know, once you see them play their first shift, you kind of know if you really got to them or not. If they're like still pissed <laughs> off. Or The best two would be when you have to fucking chirp yourself. You're like, guys, someone, yeah. guys, Steiner, hey, you and Uppy grab the sheet. Fucking chirp me. Give it to me. I don't care. I've hit you guys enough this year. But I was they laughing with Obi. down and I'd have to read it myself <laughs> yeah. without even knowing what they said. I was Shut- laughing with Obi. I'm like, fuck, poor Jay Bowmeister. Started every game. And it would always be the same thing. This number 19, this guy hasn't said a word since he's turned pro <laughs> until he had a few beers and then his name was Jim. Jay Bowmeister. <laughs> I mean, the fact that you guys call him Jim Shaddy is fucking hilarious. Shaddy, I don't want to put you on the spot, and, and but do you think you could rip me real quick if I was in the starting lineup? Do you think you could rip me right now Pretty real quick? Or like, uh, let's see. Rip the Obes. whole crew. Just rip me real quick if you can or something. Rip just the whole a, crew. Just right. a short so, Obes, Obes, I'd probably say something like uh, this guy... This guy probably has more average time uh, at the bar than he does on ice, <laughs> like that. Um, I would say for uh, for Jimmy, well, Jim, we go way back. We go back way to back. you know, National way development back. team. Um, I already know where Jim you're going. Used, we used to call this kid Stinky Jim <laughs> because he would just unleash farts uh, on the bus rides. But oh yeah. Um, we had uh, some good memories together, but Jimbo, I'd, I'd probably say uh, we got to do something about those glasses you got going on there, but oh, I'm fucking with one eye shot. Jesus Christ, but went cross-eyed reading a book. <laughs> you got cross-eyed studying at BC. <laughs> <laughs> but Updog, I mean, I already have a. a You've ripped me a few Updog. times. I don't know. If yeah, I don't need to be involved. I hit Conley. Hey, rip Conley. What would you say about Conley? Rip him. Cons, I'd probably say. His golf game Jeez. sucks, Shaddy. I'm sensitive. Be careful. <laughs> yeah, he's I'm going to say, hey, I'm gonna say he's the only guy on the missing curfew uh, crew who's got to stand at the table and not sit. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. Don't go there, Shaddy. Hey, he tweeted at me one time, chirping. Hey, like, Shaddy, I'm just glad you didn't you didn't chirp me about being fat. I, I can take the bar thing. I thought you were going to come something with being fat. By the way, so Obi's I, I, relieved. I dodged the bullet there, Shaddy. I thought you were coming with, like, <laughs> hey, O'Brien, sh- use the short fork at the buffet line or something like that. <laughs> Obi, you're, hey, you're the only guy who really hasn't gained weight in his retirement. <laughs> <laughs> that's gold, Shaddy. That is gold. <laughs> that one hurt. That one hurt. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. I don't know about you guys, but this wine's nice. Yeah. Shaddy, I'd like to cheers uh, you, too. You're for the buzzed. Cheers. I always get Shaddy, buzzed. Shaddy, listen. We're, we got four minutes left. We appreciate you coming on. And yeah, let's talk ducks. about the Ducks, buddy. Listen. Oh, he's, a, he's in town. And Shaddy, I want to tell you one thing. I, I follow the Ducks. I played for Dallas Eakins. Shaddy, you're going to love Dally, man. I don't know if you've talked to him or not. If you have, you can touch on it. You're going to love Dally. They got a great new practice rink there. Just what are your thoughts on, on being a Duck and, and being the veteran guy coming into that room and, and kind of a Stanley Cup champ, man? It's got to feel good. Yeah. You know, I... um you know, truth be told last summer when I was deciding to go to Tampa Bay and, and elsewhere, uh, I came down to Tampa and Anaheim. So, um, I had a great talk with Dallas last summer about the direction that, uh, he wanted to bring the team in. And, you know, it, it, at the time it wasn't the right move, but I was happy that they were, you know, back calling again this year. And, you know, I think for me, I, I talked to Bob Murray and he kind of told me, you know, this rebuild is over. I'm, I, I want to win again and I want to get to the playoffs again. And, and, you know, bring that sort of championship caliber, uh, you know, feel to, to the OC and, and anyone you talk to anyone who lives there, they talk obviously so highly of, of Newport beach and, and in the surrounding area and just what, what a great lifestyle it is. And, um, I think for me, it was the hockey thing that I, I wanted to know about and I'm looking forward to, like you said, I, it's, you know, at this point in your career, you're a, I'm a veteran guy and, uh, I know what I'm going to be bringing to the table there and, and know that there's a couple you know, guys in, on the team there, younger guys who are ready to take the next step. So that's my goal is to go in there and, and push uh, push that team to, to greatness. And um, I'm really excited to uh, to be out there and obviously be be close to a couple uh, couple of my good buddies as well. Yeah, Updog's fired up. And Shaddy, this is probably one thing your agent didn't tell you. Um, Ryan Getzlav has his own Sprinter van. So uh, on the way to the airport, <laughs> the you can that. jump in Getz's Sprinter van, put the feet up, watch some watch some TV. So that's, that's a little addition to your contract that you didn't know about. I love that. <laughs> you hit it, Shaddy, right on the fucking nose. They are going to really uh, enjoy your veteran presence 
the Mr. Ryan Getzloff, who's going to be a friend of the pod next week, is yeah, also going to also going to enjoy having you in there. They have uh, they've lacked you know some leadership and some old you know some just some old school fucking guys in the room. They have young guys. On a personal note, Kev, you're just going to fucking love living in California. Totally. Bro. The only thing yeah. you won't like is oh. if you buy a house, the property tax, but you'll get over that. You'll get over that. Yeah, you'll have one bad day with that weather. Hey, Shadi, you, you know what? If you need a couple more veteran guys, maybe Uppy and I come in there and move some pucks around for you guys. Put some pucks in the corner for you guys. Hey, you know? we're, all, we're, we're on a tracksuit. Yeah, we're, we're tracksuit guys now. We're, yeah, we're, we're on a tracksuit. We're, we're podcast slash tracksuit guys. I'll put it on the tee for you so you can hit one timer, Shadi, 100%. Broadway. And speaking of putting it on a tee, though. Shaddy, we're fucking Big anytime Canyon, you want to buddy. tee it up Shaddy, with us. listen. I mean, we're at Big Canyon all the time. Shaddy, we can run up Uppy's tab, too. I got his number. Me oh, yeah. You will just run up <laughs> Uppy's tab. It's perfect. Broadway, fin- anything it. last you want to finish with Shaddy? Yeah, no, I was just saying Anaheim's lucky. They're getting a guy that's been a winner his whole career. He's got national championships. He's been the uh, winner at uh, silver medals of world championships, Stanley Cup champion. And, I mean, Anaheim fans are going to be happy to get a guy that's got leadership qualities like him. He's been a captain at a young age, and he can do it all. And he's a right shot defenseman. Oh, I Jimmy, wish I would have been a right way. right shot defenseman <laughs> that could throw lefts. Who I might still be playing opposite. <laughs> I'm gonna, hey, Hazy, you're gonna be Hazy, you're gonna be my hype guy from now on, buddy. I'm gonna bring you around everywhere. Oh, I'm a great hype man. I, I, honestly, I've always wanted to be a hype man in one of those rap crews. So I, I'll be your hype man in your crew, bud. I love it. My love fee's it. not that much either. We actually need him over here at Action Park, so we, we'd love to have Hazy and Sue. Be great to have Hazy. Yeah, I'm getting the wife on board. She's thinking the warm weather. It's, you know, you know her. She likes to get her tan going. Hey, up, Hazy, let's go weather. in on a house together, buddy. Let's go. <laughs> oh, sure. I'll just take the pool house. Hazy, what are you doing out? You're freezing your ass off. Get out to California. You'd be my security hey, well, I got guard. some plans. I got Can plans. I might you. be moving out to Cali for a month here or so. Up, dog's got the house search for me. Up, he's got about 12 bedrooms in his place. Just don't <laughs> let me get in that elevator up, And the nursery now. I didn't see the nursery in the blueprint, Shaddy. When he showed me the blueprints a year and a half ago, there was uh, no oh, nursery. That was a poker a room hey, originally. There were, that there, were, room. Hey, there were girls on the balcony. Yeah, yeah chicks on both. <laughs> hey, Shaddy, that back room was supposed to be for uh, activities and it wasn't changing diapers, buddy. Jeez. <laughs> if my little girl wasn't Jeez, such an angel, I'd be, real, I'd, be, I'd be absolutely agreeing with you guys. <laughs> I'm, I'll, be, I'll let you wrap up, Shaddy, real quick. We're so happy for you. Uppy loves you. We can't wait for you to get out here. Thanks for coming on. You're welcome anytime, man. You just come in and shoot the shit like you did. And Stanley congratulations, Cup, bro. Shout out your beauty. Thank Uppy, you finish it off. Appreciate it. Uh, appreciate it. No, totally, Shaddy. Welcome your family to California. Beautiful wife, D. Your little man and uh, little one on the way. We can't wait to have you here. It's going to be a beautiful, uh, beautiful three years for you. And uh, next time we have you here, we'll have you in studio, my man. Love it. Can't wait, boys. Thanks for everything. Thanks for right, joining us, bud. Thanks, Shaddy.